When I was a kid, I never cried. I never had time to. I was always put in adult situations, like this time when I was 12. My mother abruptly woke us up in the middle of the night, tears streaming down her face, her mouth, her mouth filled with blood from being punched repeatedly. We knew that it was time to flee from him, and from that day on, we were homeless and on the streets, but I was the man in charge. My four-year-old sister and I would scope out shelters, but those places would be filled to the brim with social workers and cops, which meant we might get taken away from her. So most of the time, we'd sleep under a tree in a park. Living under trees was only hard for the first couple of weeks. I mean, it was early fall, so it wasn't too cold yet. And at that time of year, all you really needed was a layer of cardboard underneath us, a blanket we all shared, and plastic on top of us. We had routines all worked out. Showers at the local Matt Dishman swimming pool, free breakfast at school, then we'd walk around with the shopping cart until dark. And we knew exactly when the police would patrol the parks. And when they were done with their rounds, we could safely crawl under the tree without being seen. It was all right until we found the tree, this beautiful 50-foot pine tree in Irving Park. Once you settle yourself in near the trunk, you are immediately hidden by the branches. The tree itself is a wonderland of a home. The dirt is smoothed over by all the Portland rain. It felt good, good enough to relax a little and sometimes sleep. You know, I lie awake and I look at my mom and my four-year-old sister sleeping peaceful, not a care in the world when their eyes were closed. I admired it, imagining how wonderful their dreams must be. But me, I'm the man of the tree. It's my duty to protect them, so I never dreamed. But as I watch over them, I can't help with mixed emotions what I'm about to embark on next week with all of the Portland Public School sixth graders. Outdoor school. A five-day sleep-away camp in the forest. We've been hearing about it since kindergarten. No classrooms, just outdoor learning around fires and s'mores and hot meals for a whole week. And best of all, I get my own bed and clean sheets and a pillow. The day we leave for outdoor school, it's hard on me. I tell my mom, now mom, if you're gonna walk me to the school bus, you have got to leave our stuff with all of our, leave it behind the market so nobody sees us. She agrees. My sister's carrying my backpack, which is as big as her. She's always trying to help. I give my mom a hug and a kiss and I hop on the bus. The conversation around the bus is centered around who will be the first to cry of homesickness. And they say that everybody cries because they're so sad that it's over. Cry? Well, for what? I mean, this is a moment of a lifetime. I got a bed for a whole week, hot meals, none to cry about here. We hop off the bus and we are immediately bombarded by cool 16-year-old counselors who actually wanted to hang out with us. They had been waiting here for us. They gave us all name tags made out of a slice of a tree trunk with our names on it. We all had the opportunity to run and jump in the river if we wanted to. All the kids just ran and did it without even worrying about their clothes. I only had two pairs of underwear and two pairs of pants. And I didn't even have quarters for the laundromat. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even know if they had a laundromat. So I went up to the counselor and I asked him, 
They said that they would wash and dry my clothes for me, and I didn't have to worry about a thing, so I jumped into the river. As the week goes on, I forgot about my family and the troubles they're probably facing right now. I like not thinking about how hard everything is. For the first moment in my life, I felt like a kid. You know, the high point of outdoor school is the competitive game of tug of war. I approached the tape ready to take my position and represent for my school. I look down at my shoes, and these are my only pair of Nikes, which gives me just enough credibility at school so the kids don't know I'm homeless. And now they're gonna get all dirty. But this is too important to worry about adult things, like worrying about a place to wash and dry my shoes. I don't hesitate long. I grab that rope in my hands. My feet begin to sink in the mud, giving me the proper leverage I need to pull for my team. Right before the whistle blows, I see the other, other rival school, and they're taunting me, blowing kisses, telling me that I'm not strong enough. I tilt my head up to the sky, and I thank Whoever gave me this gift to just be a kid? The whistle blows. I pull hard for my team. All of a sudden, we won. Kids are coming towards me, picking me up in the air, telling me that I was strong, that I belong. You know, the last night of outdoor school, we sat around the campfire listening to counselors tell stories like they do. And this one story I will never forget. It's about all the animals seeking shelter from the worst of the storm. Some went into the caves, some went into the cliffs, but in the end, the mighty mouse had nowhere left to go until they found the mighty pine trees. And hearing that story, I begin to cry. And I notice at this point, all the kids are whispering, and I don't care. My tears are coming from a place of gratitude from this awesome week, but also from the realization that my family needs me. And I just now realized it. There was a storm coming, and I wasn't there to stay awake. But for five whole days, I got to be a kid.